Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. Today's date is Monday, September 28th, 2015, and I'm your host, Rob Dew. Here's a look at what we have coming up. Tonight, Pope Francis says that Jesus Christ failed on the cross. We are followers of Jesus Christ. And his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure. The failure of the cross. Plus, a look back at the Pope's visit to America, as federal authorities are calling it the largest security operation in U.S. history. And a high school in Texas wants students to fill out a gun survey. Does your family own any guns? If so, how many? And what are your parents' political views? Answer, none ya. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Another Wait. conspiracy well, theory. Uh, let me, let me, <laughs> that. of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Jakari Jackson for InfoWars.com reporting in Philadelphia. This is the last day of the Pope's visit. Now, since he's been here, he's said and done a lot of things. But the thing that stuck out to me the most is something he said during, I guess it was a mass, where he came out and said that the life of Jesus ultimately ended in failure, in the failure on the cross. I have the transcript here. This is reported by ABC News, and it says in part, the cross shows us a different way of measuring success. Ours is to plant the seed. God sees the fruit of our labors. And if at times our efforts and work seem to fail and not produce fruit, we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross. Then he went on to talk about the dangers of being uh, comfortable with uh, surroundings and things such as that, which is a whole nother topic in and of itself. But he says the failure of Jesus, the failure of the cross, even though the Bible clearly states that Jesus knew what was going to happen to him as uh, far as the cross was concerned, how he is going to lay his life down. He even said, Lord, if it is your will, take this bitter cup from me, but not your will, but not my will, your will be done. And particularly we know this when we look at John 17 and 18. Therefore doth my father love me because I laid my life down that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself. Which is to say, nobody took his life from him on the cross. He laid it down willingly. He knew what was going to happen to him. So to say that his life in general, the cross in particular, was a failure is something I'm very disappointed to see from a supposed spiritual leader. And there are many other things I could talk about as far as the Pope, but this is something, a glaring thing that stuck out to me. So anybody who claims to be a follower of Christ uh, I'm surprised if they're not as shocked and appalled by this as I am. I found it to be very disturbing and a very sour note to have while he was here in the United States of America. You can find more reports on InfoWars.com. And joining me to talk about the Pope's statement that he made about Jesus on the cross, plus a couple other interesting statements he made, and the major security apparatus that went on during his three-city visit is InfoWars reporter Jakari Jackson. So, Jakari, I know you've, you're have you probably all poked out at this point. I am poked I, out. I understand that. But we're going to get into it one more time. Hopefully this will be the last time we talk about it until his next papal security visit. But uh, in, in your own words, what did 
him saying Jesus was a failure on the cross, what did that mean to you? Well, I mean, if you read the whole quote, and a lot of people saying, you know, it's being taken out of context, and originally I waited a couple days because David told me about this when it first happened, but I wanted to wait because it had to be translated and want to see if anybody was debunking it or, you know, had a different translation, but it stuck with the, the quote I had in the ABC article, which many people can find anyplace else, and he was saying that Jesus' life by human standards would be considered a failure and I strongly disagree with that. The cross is, you know, the ultimate symbol of Christianity. And as I was saying on the day show, people wear crosses around their necks. They don't wear Pope mobiles. So, you know, it's, it's a major statement to say that the life of Jesus was a failure, especially when it comes to the cross. So I definitely disagree with the Pope's statement on that. Right. And then on top of that, he goes to the UN and he makes this weird statement. We had a caller call in today on the Alex Jones show. We're going to go to that clip in one second. And I just think it was just amazing the way he invoked his own name and didn't say he was coming in the name of the Father. Let's go to that clip now. Hey, hey, Alex and Leo, check this out. When the Pope spoke before the United Nations, he says, I come in my own name and in the name of the Catholic community. Well, check out John 543. I am come in my Father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. I Whoa, out, exactly. I He's like following stuff I've read in like serious, you know, FBI criminology reports about Satanism, what the real Satanists do is they they blaspheme and change everything that's key in the Bible. So he says, Christ failed at the cross. The cross is a failure. The Secretary General, the Secretary -General of the United Nations has invited the Pope to address this distinguished assembly of nations. In my own name and that of the entire Catholic community. Repeat that again. Yes, the very first remarks out of his, his mouth, the translator will say it. I flipped out, Alex. I was, he says, I come to you in my own name, in the name of the Catholic community. He did not come in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I never saw him do the sign of the cross while he was here, any of that stuff. This guy is an imposter. Here it is. Thank you for your kind words once again following a tradition which I feel honored, the Secretary General of the United Nations, the Pope, to address the Distinguished Assembly of Nations in my own name and that of the entire Catholic community. Wow, so he said in my name, not in Christ's name. I am come in my Father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. The Secretary General, the Secretary -General of the United Nations has invited the Pope to address this distinguished assembly of nations. In my own name and that of the entire Catholic community. So there he said it, in my own name and in the entire Catholic community. That's who he's coming in the name of. He's not saying he's coming in the name of God or the Father or Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit. He's just keeping it to him. So he's personalizing it. Yeah, he made it very much personal. And that's another thing. You know, I don't really keep up with the things the Pope says and does, you know, before this visit. But if you make statements like that all the time, I'm very concerned for the Catholic Church because, you know, it's just one thing to say, you know, I did this and, I, and I'm great and I'm awesome. But when you go up there in front of a congregation and you're trying to uh, say that you're coming, it, it's a very, in my opinion, deliberate thing mm -hmm. because it's very much in the Bible. As the caller pointed out, you're supposed to come in the name of God. But he's saying, I'm coming in my own name and in the name of the Catholic Church. And I think there's something very wrong with that and statement. It happened to be during an interview with Leo Zagami, who's very, been very critical of the Pope and the Vatican recently about what's going on there. And if you haven't watched his interview, I encourage you out there to check that out. We'll put a link to that in, uh, in the description here on YouTube. But now I want to get to the all the security that went on, because to me... Security theater. This exa Exactly. Security theater. This was just a big exercise for Homeland Security to stretch its muscles and basically go, we're going to take over three cities in, in five days and see if we can do it and see if people are going to complain and see if people will comply. I think it was a big exercise in compliance that mm -hmm. we have to do this for the Pope. Everybody kneel down. We're, we're going to tell restaurants they're going to make a lot of money. They're not going to make any money. No. It's going to be it's going to be really bad. But let's start let's start with D.C. So here we have in the Washington Times, Pope brings security and traffic challenges to D.C., but officials say they're ready. They're used to this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they had multiple layers of screening, including mag magnometers, bag searches at all venues. And so that was part of what was going on in D.C. Another challenge will be the, the motorcade during which Pope Francis desired to interact with people along the route while keeping him safe. Now, what did we see there? We saw Pope Kid run out to there with a T-shirt and a letter 
Nobody stopped her. His head of security actually lifts her up, who was a general in the Knights of Malta. So this obviously wasn't anything they were too particularly concerned about in terms no. of having people interact with the Pope, but you have all this security theater around to basically push everybody around. And, you know, as we reference, you know, I was out there, I got my footage. You know, it's very difficult to get close to the Pope. I can say that yeah. from my own personal account, it's very yeah. difficult to get Unless your parents are illegal aliens, then yes. it's easy. So, you know, basically, like it came out in the AP, you know, yep. people reporting on it now. Right there. That, uh, you know, basically this kid was uh, coached and allowed to go into the vicinity of the Pope. And, it was yeah. been planned for a year. Yeah. And nobody knew about it. And, you know, that's they what trying to make to it seem like it was, you know, some it was spur, a spontaneous it was event. a spontaneous per yeah. the moment, you know, great, you know, family moment. You know, it's <laughs> it wasn't exactly that. Right. Now, and continuing here, um, they're saying that his uh, at a rare designation, Jay Johnson designated pro Francis to stop in each city a national special security event, a rare designation to streamline the federal response that has previously been used for presidential inaugurations, State of the Union addresses. Political conventions, NATO summits, the 2002 Winter Olympics, and the Super Bowl in 2002, which I'm not sure where that one was, but that was right after 9-11, so mm -hmm. that would have been probably a big deal in there. And just, uh, they're talking about 90 staff members from 50 agencies that are monitoring communications from around the clock. Probably something they're doing anyway, they're just admitting oh, yeah. that yeah. they're doing it there. They have Secret Service protective teams, including counter snipers, counter assault agents. Um, they've used replicas of the Pope Mobile. Um, and then they talk about uh, uh, the national security going into the city of Philadelphia where they're shutting down bridges. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're calling it unprecedented. Even visits by uh, presidents didn't receive this much security. And they only allow $4.5 million to handle all this security for per year. Mm -hmm. That's what the federal government allows. I'm sure they went way over that. What oh, the yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I don't know all the facts and figures, yeah. but when you look at all the barricades, all the MRAPs, uh, all the overtime for the local police, the, of course, the feds are there, National Guard is there. I'm sure that was a very huge bill. And even the street cleanup, you know, David right. took some shots, you know, after it was all said and done, the street crews had to come work overtime to clean up all the mess. So it, detritus. Yeah, so I'm sure it was well over whatever their allotted budget was. Well, and even Dan Bongino, who we've had as a guest on here, ex-Secret Service, he, he weighed in on a local WBL-TV Channel 11 article the Pope security situation, to use a military analogy, would be DEFCON 1, said Dan Bongino, former Secret Service agent and security expert. It's the most serious security situation we can have in the United States regarding personal protection. In my experience as a Secret Service agent, I've never seen another operation as detailed as the Pope, including the President of the United States. I agree with that, because what we saw in Philadelphia, and we'll go back to New York and some of these other yeah. cities, but when we look at Philadelphia, where there is no United Nations, there was no Obama, the Pope had more security in Philadelphia than he had in D.C. or New York. Right. So it was a huge show of force, you know, huge security theater out there. And it, and here in uh, the NYPD ramps up security ahead of Pope's visit, they get into a little more, you know, 40 miles of traditional motorcade fencing, eight foot high security fences, 800 tons of concrete barriers, mm -hmm. more another eight foot mile, uh, mile long fence in uh, Central Park. I mean, they really went overboard. But then... Here's another one out of the Post, New York Post. Armed ex-firefighter breached JFK security in a bid to see the Pope. And here's a guy carrying a, a foot-long hunting knife. Mm -hmm. Ex-firefighter flashed his badge, used Jedi mind tricks to get through all the security because he understands how this is. And that's how usually these things would be. They'd be an inside job. Yeah. Said he wanted to see Pope Francis and change the world. And he got all the way into a motorcade. He happened to get in the wrong motorcade. He got into, uh, I think it was with the motorcade from the guy from Turkmenistan. So he got in the wrong motorcade. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't get to change the world and, and cause an incident. But here we see it's going to be somebody on the inside who can get past. They know what the security is like, and they can move around freely. Oh, yeah. All you have to do is watch these guys. And uh, we saw several points where, you know, if you had something as simple as, you know, a rented a rented costume, a police costume or a plastic badge, whatever, you know, these guys is coming. They flash their lights, you know, had uh, some unmarked cars, you know, flash the lights. They got to drive right into the to the areas. So, yes, I definitely can believe that that happened. And then you get to Philly. You guys land there on, uh, on train, I guess. Oh, you don't you really the arrive. Yeah. You, you arrive by train. You get there. They don't let you hail a cab or anything. There's nobody there. You have to walk. I guess what should have been a 40-minute walk turned, turned into a two-and-a-half-hour two walk because of all the stuff. You talked about the story about the cops driving on the sidewalk with the golf cart, mm -hmm. which is illegal anywhere else. But I guess if you're a cop, it's okay.